Within the Benten fandom, one of the most common trains of thought is what would this alien's predator be? With just a simple Google search, you can find a vast array of fascinating different designs all created to be the hypothetical predators for other alien species. While creating your own predators is certainly a fun time, I personally find more enjoyment in looking at canon alien species within the Ben 10 franchise and imagining which of them might be the predators for other species themselves. That little thought experiment led me down a rabbit hole where I came to think, hold on, how the hell isn't the universe super duper overcrowded with all these Toku stars going around? Like, yeah, they're not planet sized, but seeing as Toku stars are born from cosmic storms, and seeing as recurrent cosmic storms occur every 27 days, and that's around every sun, and there are also non-recurrent cosmic storms that happen at random as well, that would mean that the universe as a whole would be absolutely chock full of Toku stars. And these Goliaths would be a lot more common in the franchise than we would be led to believe. So then that made me think, hmm. if there aren't as many Toku stars as there should be, perhaps a certain species preys upon them. Think about it. Something as big as a Toku star makes a very filling meal for sure. And with so many of them around, making them a prey source would be a benefit to any species capable of taking them down. So, I began searching the wiki, scanning over all possible matches for our supersized snack species, and in the end, I think I found the perfect match. The Big Tick. Without further ado, let's discuss why. It's hero time. To start with, we know for a fact that both Toku stars and the Big Tick are spacefaring species. Seeing as the Big Tick came to Earth from somewhere out in space, so at the very least, we know they inhabit the same regions of the universe as one another. We also know for a fact that the Big Tick is capable of absorbing the nutrients from entire worlds, as we were told happened on Arboria, and what we saw firsthand on Earth. To explain the biology of Toku stars, it's very likely that this species is not organic in nature. They're born in cosmic storms, and seeing as matter cannot be created from nothingness or destroyed, the body of a Toku star would have to be made up of the materials found within a cosmic storm, hence why such things are their birthplace. Toku stars are the product of cosmic storms. We know for a fact that within the Ben 10 franchise, there exist other life forms that come from a variety of different elemental bases. To give a few examples, the Kraho are canonically tungsten based life forms, the Sonorosians are canonically silicon based life forms, and the humans are likely carbon based life forms, just like they are in the real world. If we look at which substances can be found most abundantly in space, we find that hydrogen is the most abundant substance, followed second by helium. So Kustars are likely not helium-based life forms, seeing as that would make more sense for a species like ectoneurites because, you know, they have a lot more similar properties. Seeing as hydrogen takes up roughly 75% of all matter in the universe, it's far more likely that a Toku star is a hydrogen-based life form, simply judging off their sheer scale and the amount of material needed to produce them. In the real world, there are several reasons why animals cannot exceed a certain size, such as being too big a target or not having enough food to sustain themselves, inability to properly dissipate body heat in warmer climates, and so on. But one of the biggest reasons, no pun intended, is that they would simply collapse under their own weight. The largest animal to ever live, the blue whale, is only able to be as big as it is because it lives in the ocean, a place with both plentiful food, plentiful space, and increased ease of movement despite their large size, and an overall lower temperature in their surrounding environment. The largest land animals to ever live were the sauropods, which you'll most likely recognize from species such as the Brontosaurus and Brachiosaurus. That doesn't really relate to this video at all, it's just a fun fact for anyone watching the video who likes dinosaurs as much as I do. Anyway, going back to Toku stars. Hydrogen is only one seventh as dense as air, so a hydrogen based life form would be very lightweight in nature, and thus would be able to grow to much greater sizes without difficulty. This would explain not only how Toku stars are able to be so big, but also how they aren't immediately shattered by their own weight upon entering gravitational fields surrounding planets like Earth. They're lighter than air itself, so they're able to survive within or outside of gravitational fields without difficulty. But they're also just large enough that within gravitational fields, their overall mass is still significant enough that they are affected by gravity, or else they'd be floating all over the place, which we've seen isn't the case on several planets within the franchise. Something else that adds to the theory of Toku stars being hydrogen-based is their ability to produce so-called cosmic rays. In real life, do you know what material is found most abundantly within cosmic rays? You guessed it, hydrogen. More specifically, hydrogen ions, which is essentially just hydrogen with one of its subatomic particles missing, that being the electron. As such, it's likely that a Toku star is able to produce cosmic rays by ionizing the hydrogen atoms within their body, concentrating them, and projecting them outward into a fearsome attack. While it might sound detrimental for a hydrogen-based life form to be blasting hydrogen ions out of itself, think of it this way. Due to the abundance of hydrogen in the universe, Toku stars likely breathe hydrogen, which could be found in the atmosphere of planets like Earth, which would mean that they'd be able to breathe in and out of space. As such, producing a cosmic ray with hydrogen ions is, for a Toku star, likely no different than when we humans breathe, taking in the air, 
absorbing the oxygen and breathing out the waste gas, carbon dioxide. It serves no detriment for the body of a carbon-based life form like us to breathe out the waste product of carbon dioxide, so it likely serves no detriment for a Toku star to expel and dispose of hydrogen ions either. It's quite literally as easy as breathing. Also, let's acknowledge the fact that in Omniverse, when Kevin goes to absorb material from way big, he gets a metallic overlay texture. And we know for a fact that Omniverse uses different textures for when Kevin absorbs different substances. This all but confirms that Toku stars are metallic, rather than organic, in nature. We have seen Kevin absorb wood before, but unless I'm remembering wrong, he only ever absorbs wood from sources like wooden planks or wooden marbles, so he can likely only absorb dead wood or lumber. Seeing as we've seen Kevin both inherit Toku star DNA from the Omnitrix and absorb metal from Waybig, this tells us that Waybig is both biological in nature and possesses metallic parts. But if Waybig is partly metallic, what about all that stuff to do with hydrogen? Well, my friends, allow me to introduce you to a special little material known as metallic hydrogen, a substance which, yes, is both hydrogen and metallic. So this is likely the substance that Waybig is made of, or at least what its red parts are made of. While the white parts may be another type of hydrogen-based substance, but likely his whole body is. Seeing as metallic hydrogen is also electrically conductive, it could also explain why bolts of lightning exist within the cosmic storms that the two stars are created from. Anyway, what does all of this have to do with the Big Tick? Well, seeing as we know that the Big Tick likes to suck raw materials right out of the planet it feeds on, why don't we take a look at what materials are most common within planets? Within the Earth's crust, only 0.14% of the crust is made up of hydrogen, but it can also be found more abundantly in sources of water such as an ocean, ice packs, rivers, lakes, and the atmosphere itself. Seeing as hydrogen exists within the Earth's atmosphere, it could be possible that the Big Tick was drawn to Earth by the existence of hydrogen. We saw it seemingly absorb the very life force out of the ground and trees nearby. What does soil need to remain fertile, and what do trees need to survive? Water. What is water made up of? Mostly oxygen, but also 11.11% .11 hydrogen. So, what we see here could be the Tick absorbing hydrogen from the planet, specifically from the crust, the soil, the plants rooted in the soil, and the atmosphere, which would explain why it changes colour. A diet like that would be pretty damn catastrophic for life on a planet like Earth, so it would make sense why absorbing hydrogen from the planet would result in such disastrous effects, and why it ultimately wiped the planet of Arborea from existence before the Big Tick came to Earth. Essentially, what I'm suggesting here is that as whatever species the Big Tick belongs to roams the universe, devouring the hydrogen from planets it comes across, if it came across a hydrogen-based life form like a Toku star, surely it would be more than grateful for such a snack. Remember that the Big Tick only destroyed Arborea one week before it attempted to destroy Earth, so clearly it needs to eat at least once a week, if not more frequently, seeing as the only reason the fact that Arborea was destroyed a week ago was brought up was because one of the Tick's worshippers told Cannonbolt about it. So he could well have been leaving out other worlds that had been destroyed in the meantime because, well, they didn't relate to Arborean Pelorotas like Cannonbolt. Knowing how frequently the Big Tick has to eat, I wouldn't be surprised to find out that they're less focused on specifically devouring the hydrogen from planets, but rather any source of hydrogen that they can come across, be it from a planet or a space roaming hydrogen-based life form big enough to provide a meal that would at least stave off their hunger for a little bit longer, aka Toku stars. Plus, if we compare how big a real tick is to a human, then how big the big tick is compared to way big, while it's not an exact comparison, I'd argue that their size difference is great enough that it would be similar for a tick to latch onto a Toku star undetected as it would be for a real tick to latch onto real people undetected. But with that, that's all I really have to say on this theory. Honestly, I'm really proud of this one, and I think it's pretty compelling. But let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. And before we end this video, let's move into this video's poll. So, last time I asked you guys which quirk would you rather have if you lived in the My Hero Academia world? Out of float, black whip, danger sense, or smoke screen? With 390 total votes, 16% of you said smoke screen, 62% of you said black whip, which I assumed would be the winning quirk, so no surprise there. 18% of you said smoke screen, and 3% of you said smoke screen. I'm actually in the minority on this one, uh, cause out of these four quirks, the one I would want most is smoke screen. I can't really explain why, I just find it kind of neat. It's cool, but I can't put a finger on it, you know? I just like it, so it's a shame that it was barely ever used in the anime or the manga. But now, moving on to this video's poll, I'm gonna ask you guys a nice and simple one. Which design of way big is your favorite? Classic way big, UAF way big, Ultimate Way Big or Omniverse Way Big. Also, in my next discussion video, I'll give a free shout out to anyone who can guess which Way Big design is my favorite in the comment section of this video. So, yeah, until next time, fellow heroes.